Songs of Sticks Review, Deranged Edition, trademark by Seth Zintach. What is the worth of a human life? I can't give you that answer. But Isn't the answer like $400,000? Something like that? I can tell you the worth of an elvish life. 62 meat and 17 leather. Once nice. you really peel them down. <laughs> hey, hey, people. Seth nice. here. Despite doing this for several years, I have never figured out how to use a microphone. And for this, I sincerely apologize. Songs of Six is an ambitiously made, self-styled city-state simulator. I love developed this. for the better part of seven years. Now, imagine you start playing the game and mm -hmm. naturally you play the tutorial. I imagine most people do. The difference, however, is that over a hundred hours later, I am still... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I saw that. I saw that. That's how you can tell I'm really, uh, that's how you can tell I'm really engaged. Nice! I love this man. I love this man's library. He's got some good tastes. All I'm gonna say. I am still on the tutorial. This is the story of Jackaton, the default starting location for the tutorial, which is named after the developer. We have no mountains, no natural resources, a uh -huh. sprinkle of trees, a small lake, and generally nothing. We're sandwiched between four neighbors, the city-states of Tegenval and Sluva, and the empires of Starless and Ulisu. Uh -huh. In a word, it's not looking very good for us. No. In the beginning, you start with a couple dozen citizens and a dream of something greater. Okay. Unfortunately, we are Cretonians. These are peaceful, vegetarian pigmen with no aspirations beyond slumming in the dirt and farming crops. <laughs> but for our purposes, nice. they're perfect. And I quickly yeah. started an agricultural operation. It's uh, not much, but at least we're not starving. Grain has to be processed by a bakery, while fruit and vegetables can be eaten directly. <laughs> Regrettably, instead of a fruit farm, I started an orchard. I did this on the promise that it's a slow operation with twice the potential yield. To this day, it has produced no fruit, because mm -hmm. by the time the fruit trees mature, I get a worm infestation and have to chop them all down. Not Citizens the worms. typically prefer locals over immigrants, and the only way to increase the local population is by having children at the local nursery. In this game, a year is 16 days, and each four days is a season. A baby becomes a child and a child becomes eligible for labor at four <laughs> years of age. Songs of Six encourages the miracle of childbirth with the economic miracle of child labor. Also, after my pigmen accidentally snacked on all the vegetables in the nursery crib, I can confidently tell you infant mortality has no effect on the happiness of your population. Nice. But you know what has an effect on my happiness? Getting paid to plaster my walls with illustrations of naked women. Hang nice. on, guys. This wall, it's so barren. So oh, dull. Dis display so it. lifeless. Luckily, today's sponsor is Displate. Nice. Displate is a unique metal poster designed to capture all your passions. Whether they be Elden Ring, Star Wars, Warhammer, or Call of Duty, Displate has over 2 million artworks across hundreds of brands. If you know me, you'll know I love my Displates more than any lame paper poster. <laughs> but what if they could be even better? You see, I can only look at my normal posters. That's okay. a problem. And mm -hmm. the solution is Textra. Displate's brand new tactile poster collection now I can run my fingers along my precious displays <laughs> and really feel those tactile textures, 3D contours, and selective matte and gloss effects. And of course, it makes them look even cooler. The new texture oh, finish will be available on hundreds this. of the best-selling displays, and Displate looks forward to expanding the library of display textures in the following months. So, what are you waiting for? Go to displate.com forward slash Seth and check out the selected designs that you can now get with a new texture finish. Transform your walls today with Textra. And thank you you to this plate for sponsoring this video you're so good god that was a 10 out of 10 ad read oh my god bro that had like a hook line and sinker beginning middle and end i just it, it, it kind of played with some of that is it uncanny valley no it the 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 hand uh the where they these these tr the transforming over the live footage of the uh, of the display right bro that's how you do an ad read it was that had character, that had charm, that had intent. That was a 10 out of 10. I loved everything about that lives and dies on happiness. If you fail to keep your citizens happy, you'll start a failure cascade that ends in ruin. The simulation goes down to each individual ah, citizen effect. and measures the average fulfillment of their needs and desires for that particular race. It's the, it's the MMO downward spiral. We say the game is dead, so therefore people think the game is dead, to which actually kills the game. Ha ha ha!
race is an interesting topic. Some races don't get along. Some races are predisposed to crime. Some races control our educational sector, our uh -huh. labs, and our academia. But what else am I supposed to do when everyone else hates education? I'm talking, of course, about none other than humans. Humans nice. are troublesome, criminal, and have a lowest sanity score of any race, which yeah. means an essential component of any healthy human population is an asylum, but they heckin' <laughs> love science, which is important because this game handles research in a unique fashion. You don't just learn something. No, you research it, and then you have to pass on that generational knowledge across time. Remember, uh -huh. we don't start with paper. We get to that point after multiple generations of oral tradition. And even right. then, we have to maintain and preserve our existing knowledge against entropy. Almost every other- Which is actually super interesting because, and, I, and I've gone over this a few times before, not any time recently, there's somewhere, I think it's somewhere in Europe, uh, where nuclear waste, long-term nuclear waste that, you know, doesn't actually become inert for, you know, a long time, like, what, hundreds of thousands of years? Um, how do you preserve warnings throughout the generations, right? So you literally have people that are like, hey, yeah, how, how are people in 100,000 years supposed to read danger, do not enter, literally toxic right and then you get into pictograms you get into how uh, evolution of language evolves uh, fail safes for that kind of thing such as certain colors certain patterns right are they, they will scare people off right it's really fascinating to think about that and that i don't know that that entire section here about you know passing things along and thinking for the future kind of reminded me of that concept race dislikes intellectualism and prefers to be indoctrinated this is nice. advantageous as it fosters loyalty in the absence of happiness and i'm sorry what was that indoctrinated this is <laughs> What is happening here? What? Advantageous, as it fosters loyalty in the absence of happiness. An open mind is an open bussy, its gates unbarred and unguarded. So, you know what? Fair enough. No, that that makes sense. That 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 right there is your new uh, your new life motto. Might argue that great men are made, not born. In the case of Dondorians, that is literally true because they appear as fully formed adults at the base of a mountain. For this reason, <laughs> the only way to get Dondorians is by immigration. They're good at mining. They're good at Minecraft. They're basically dwarves. The Tilapi are forest dwelling elves. They're good with trees and they're good with nature. What else? They're also known for violating human men for several days before they cannibalize them. Bizarrely, this makes them compatible with the cave-dwelling Garfimi, who are effectively bug men. What they lack in skill, they make up for with raw numbers. And there's nothing bugs enjoy more than plucking limbs from the other races. Yeah. And while most cities will have a mixed population, some races don't get along with anyone. <laughs> Yo, what? While most cities will have a mixed population, some- First of all, Banui, bro, why is he looking at me like that, though? I don't I don't like I don't like where this is going. I don't like what he's selling. Okay, I don't want it. Some races don't get along what? with anyone. The Amevia are coastal dwelling lizard men. They're you're gonna get some people on the internet that are gonna be like mm. I mean I got an art tablet. No, no, stop it. Uniquely xenophobic <laughs> and incompatible with other races, which is offset by their impressive physique and high lifespan. If you want a true monocultural isolationist experience, try the lizards. Finally, there are two giant races you can't normally get. The in-lore explanation is that their populations have been decimated over the course of several great wars. Okay. If you control a region containing a haven and satisfy their high demands, they can be convinced to join your cause. While they have many differences, they do share a common trait. They're fucking gigantic and make for the best shock troops in the entire game. There's a bit of an irony in a sense that uh, they're incredibly rare and almost extinct. And the best thing they're good at is getting even more extinct. Yeah. The Argonash are spider leviathans with a voracious appetite. Spitter, spitter, spitter. They don't care for anything except food, which may sound simple until you realize the logistical nightmare of providing four meals a day to every person on the map. The Cantors may ask for more up front, but they're easier to satisfy. Generally, once I arrested two people at the same time, but only had one courtroom. One of the two arrested thieves had no legal representation. They considered this a complete breakdown of my legal system and left in disgust. But at the time, <laughs> I knew none of this. I was a young blood desperate to turn a profit and expand my settlement. YouTubers are a prime example of making the most amount of money with the least amount of skill and intellect. <laughs> I like that this is all John Trunchu. Oh my god. Bro, 
His videos are so dense. I love it. It's it's like peeling back layers on an onion. It's so good. Okay, I need to hear his actual paragraph now. YouTubers are part of this. I was a young blood desperate to turn a profit okay. and expand my settlement. YouTubers okay. are a prime example of making the most amount of money with the least amount of skill and intellect. In a yeah. fair society. No, honestly, no. Like, have you seen me? God, dude, I... Some days I wonder if I even register as, like, actually alive. Like, if I let register as actually cognizant. Dude, I, I do some stupid stuff. Society. These are the people who should be toiling in the coal mines and dying of black lung. Yeah. Appropriately, I simulated this by <laughs> importing Garfibi slaves and renaming them <laughs> to my favorite content creators. Yeah. I invested so much into this coal mining operation only to find out I've spent several in-game years for a tar pit with 30% efficiency. It wasn't nice. just unprofitable, but because of the size and scale, the cost of maintenance alone sent me into the red. On the other hand, I found out slavery is actually quite well received. As my citizens huh enjoy a slave population so long <laughs> as it's not their own my settlement grew and unfortunately crime had become an issue another day no no no, no. It, it's fine it's fine because they're more equal right they're more equal than the slaves <laughs> no 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 everyone's equal except they're, they're more equal. <laughs> oh that's that's messed up hey, i love it another oh. flashing the people lived in fear. Arrests had to be made, but because I spread myself so thin, I didn't have the resources or manpower to enforce it. And so, the public indecency continued, until I increased my coverage. And, after the prison started filling up, I am forced to make a difficult statement. Okay. Dandorians are sex pests. Of the five <laughs> indecent exposers, all five have been dwarves. I have no further comment. At this point, I was earning... <laughs> Man... <laughs> that correlation being causation it just works <laughs> oh god dude just market correlation being causation to idiots that's how you sell that's how you make how you make profit <laughs> I love this. I love this content. Capital by exporting furniture. This game doesn't have a fixed economy. Trade prices fluctuate and work on the rules of supply and demand. Basically, if you can make your own, that's strongly encouraged. If you have excess to sell off, that's good too. But over trading a commodity can apply disproportionate pressure on the value, which is minimized by the number of trade partners. So if you want money, you better diversify. But if you don't, Poverty also has its advantages. If our treasury is empty and we're dead broke, guess what? Our diplomatic gifts mean a whole lot more. Which No, I'm not going back. I'm not going to explain it, chat. I'll, I'll tell you when you're older. It's important because if our reputation drops to zero with any of the four factions bordering us, we're getting invaded. And with a <laughs> current standing army of zero men, I don't fancy my chances. So uh -huh. I would intentionally dip my savings into the red, plead, cry, and defecate in front of my neighbors, <laughs> and a pathetic display made me an unattractive target for assault. I would reputation farm into the multiple thousands so I could reliably forget about it for the next dozen years, while yeah. enjoying the benefits of almost zero taxation on all trade. This gave me a lot- Good God, dude. Why is this game getting incredibly meta? Oh my God. <laughs> this game is a commentary and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a masterpiece that this this is it this is a masterpiece this is actually perfect the time to experiment and figure out what i'm doing firstly i tried mining gemstone subsequently trees. i failed at mining gemstone instead i used the natural fertility of jacketon and turned it into an opium plantation. I nice. still had a lot of Garfimi slaves left over and put them to work in fields of poppies and cotton. However, I got overly ambitious and my bugs got a little rowdy. There is no other situation where the following words can be said. The cotton pickers are having another uprising. Subsequent. There's so many layers. There's so many interweaving plots. 
<laughs> Bro, this is actually better than most modern TV. <laughs> we abolished the practice. Not on moral Ooh. grounds, but because they robbed my throne and took just about everything. Happiness was at an all-time low among my Dundorians, so I tried producing alcohol and opened a tavern. Demand outstripped supply. Access was terrible and supplies were so low that it just made them angrier. So I tried satisfying food preference instead. Mushrooms, fish, complex proteins. Then huh. I restricted everyone to just eating bread and they were happier. Additionally, nice. I tried introducing fine dining in the form of restaurants and almost lost the game to a public riot. Not only <laughs> did I fail to meet supply, but each time I did so, a citizen would starve, spiraling into a vicious loop. Their desire uh -huh. for the McMenu was so strong that it, it overrode their survival instinct to eat street food, preferring instead the embrace of death. This was not a plague of famine, it was a plague of choice. After the many <laughs> lessons learned, alcohol is haram, cooking is forbidden, and our entire food pyramid is bread. Finally, I did make a breakthrough yeah. in citizen satisfaction. It turns out that when I select and look at a random peasant, they are not meant to be caked in shit. And only <laughs> after building bathhouses 40 hours into the game did I make that connection. Around <laughs> I thought that's just how he looked. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I dead ass thought that's how they looked. I didn't actually think that they were caked. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Bro, this game is a masterpiece. This is a wild ride. <laughs> this time I also realized after reading oh, the God. Tooltip, the reason for my insane cost of maintenance. You see, buildings have walls. Walls yeah. increase isolation. I did not build any walls. My God. Do I have to rebuild my entire city? Yes, I did. I rebuilt the whole thing. And I learned to love city planning. Building design is incredibly fun, and there's no greater satisfaction than having an elegantly designed lavatory for optimal shitting, pissing, and sharding. Nice. In the end, you take so much pride in what you've built. Am I coping? Yes, absolutely. But after numerous trials and tribulations, I had a stable, diversified economy and a series of shacks resembling civilization. Also, I promoted a four-year-old to become nobility. Because it's funny, nobles yeah. provide a variety yeah. of beneficial effects, and currently, they're a work in progress. Or, as the developer translated to me, they cannot betray you yet. Everything yet. was calm and peaceful, until we found a Cretonian with his eyes scooped out. On the body was a <laughs> note, signed Jake the Invincible, claiming that he's saving lives by returning them to his forgotten god. Our city had a serial killer. Another day, another victim found dead. Eye sockets empty. Every what a cool mechanic. Like, really? What a cool mechanic that just, like... That's like if you're playing, like, new open-world Assassin's Creed, right? Like, say you're playing Valhalla or, like, uh, um, Origins, right? And you just have an enemy that can just, like, Shadows of War, Shadows of Mordor, like, Nemesis system. Just kind of come up and just start ganking randos. <laughs> or, like, you're playing Skyrim... And like, I don't know, Narvi from, uh, what is it? What's, what is he from? Is he from Riverwood? Maybe? I can't remember. And he just, Narvi just like, you fail to assassinate him during the Dark Brotherhood quest line. He snaps and he just like, he just goes on a rampage in solitude. Like, it's such, that, that's cool. That's, I, that's so cool. That would make, that'd be really cool in a modern game. Like, Really? Can you imagine just like like open world game, right? Open world exploration game. Elder Scrolls Six, Todd's Todd's bunghole. I don't I don't know. We don't know where it's gonna be. <laughs> Elder Scrolls Six, you have NPCs that get generated randomly and they can roll to just be a serial on a library. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. And so you're just you're just walking down the city, right? Just walking down. And you just hear you just hear like from way off, never should have come here. You see a Khajiit just flying through the air. <laughs> His physics. <laughs> Dude, I need this. Oh my god, Elder Scrolls 6, Todd's bunghole, please. I need this. The victim was a Cretonian, and this was clearly a racially targeted crime. Terror ruled the streets, and we had no leads. It wasn't until a passerby claimed to see a Cretonian woman fleeing the scene. This information didn't add up, but we tortured a confession out of them, and they pleaded guilty to all crimes. The serial killings promptly stopped. Jake uh -huh. the Invincible was identified to be a middle-aged Cretonian woman predating on her own 
unknown people. We sent the killer into the arena to be chopped into pieces for the spectacle of a crowd. Yeah. We gave their body as much respect as it deserved. <laughs> we pissed on it and dumped it into a mass grave. <laughs> Serial killings are rare, and they're not often so straightforward. You might get the wrong guy and torture out a false confession, or the trail simply goes cold from lack of evidence. Eventually, beyond exports and fields of opium, I found the most lucrative source of cash. I would intentionally reduce my army down to zero to try and entice rebels to attack my city. The uh -huh. moment this happens, I hire mercenaries, crush the invaders, <laughs> and sell off their loot for fat stacks. <laughs> yeah. This sent me from borderline broke to half a million in the bag. Now, hire- You know what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Dear God. And this 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 nation, they're they're unarmed. We're just gonna walk in. We're just gonna take over the place. Ha! But you see, me and my Yaski plot, we just hired all of these mercenaries. <laughs> Certified get bent moment. <laughs> Entire army swings in, cracks profits. <laughs> Enter Dynasty phase by everything your turn. <laughs> no one's gonna get that joke, but dear God, is it funny? If you get that joke, I love you. <laughs> mercenaries is incredibly expensive. <laughs> Paying them is even more expensive, but they handle their own supplies and they're instantaneous. I use them to conquer a neutral region, and as I did, my brain expanded and my neurons started firing because uh -huh. suddenly. I can hire more. For my each region God. under my control, I get access to five extra mercenary companies. So I hatched a plan. Take all my money, raise an army of mercenaries, and conquer Winsta, the weakest nation I could find nearby. With Aww. each city taken, my numbers increased, eventually laying siege to their capital. I sold everything to keep those mercenaries paid. I almost ran out of money. If that <laughs> siege lasted a day longer than it did, I would have lost. But in the end, it That's was close. worth it because I reached the max limit of mercenary companies and I could now recruit enough men to overpower anyone. Problem yeah. is, they're asking for 750k up front with a daily fee of 100k. Soldiers wow. of fortune have a steep asking price, but yeah. what if the golden horde could pay for itself? I've been on the back foot of negotiations, pleading and groveling to my neighbors for mercy until now. Selling oh, no. my spoils, I muster a short-lived but massive army, declare war, intercept their army, and immediately sue for peace, to which they have no option but to accept my favorable terms. The best part. But, but that, but that's, but that's peace under duress. <laughs> I'm still suing for peace. <laughs> no. oh. About shotgun diplomacy is you already know the answer each time. Because yeah. once they surrender, we do it again until we empty their entire treasury. Unknowingly, they just paid for their own demise. <laughs> the century of humiliation was over as Jacketon turned on their allies. No longer will I be extorted each time it's their nephew's birthday. Tegenval and Sluva were too small to resist. The elvish empire of Starless to the north was a different story, but led to the development oh, no. of strategies I'd replicate going forward. Economic hyperwar is the act of manipulating the enemy to take decisions that are numerically beneficial while destroying them internally. We invade <laughs> cities, sell them back to the enemy only to invade them again. Then we use them as bartering chips for other cities. Take control of those cities, demolish the walls, and advance our front line. We remove the need for extended siege and reduce the enemy to a single fight. There was I love that. Like, I I'm trying to think about that from a historical setting. That's like... Oh god, how do I describe it? That's like if you're fighting oh, what era do we want to go to? Okay. We're going like medieval, right? Medieval king, knights, Europe, etc. Okay, right? That's like <laughs> you and your company <laughs> just showing up, taking over their castle, <laughs> saying, No, 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 we don't want war. Just just give us money. Just just give us money. <laughs> Before you peace out, you just like knock down one of their walls. <laughs> and so you walk away with them weaker and <laughs> you with a lot of money. <laughs> and then two weeks later, you're just like, man, it's time for a payday. I'm in. Going to go swing in the profits again. <laughs> Ransom it back. <laughs> knock down another wall. <laughs> Yes! 
Only one exception to this. Oh. As luck would have it, the human empire of Ulisu to the south had the largest standing army in the oh. world. Even if I recruited every mercenary, I would still be outnumbered two to one. So okay. I drained his treasury and I weighed it. Eventually, he could no longer afford to maintain his army and uh -huh. fell like the rest of them. Jacketon lives by a simple proverb, feed the earth and it will feed you. But we fed the earth so much that nature herself is vomiting up red. There's too many prisoners of war and not enough mass graves to go around. <laughs> the rest is morbid history as I took the rest of the map. Jacketon is now the single state empire of the world. Resources are limitless. Currency is infinite, for we possess an infinite money printer, the design of which is as follows. I form a puppet state, declare war on them, take all their money from a peace treaty, invade them anyway, and install a new puppet to repeat the process. I have, in every sense, completely rigged the system. I love it. like Sisyphus reaching the top of a mountain, I had nothing left to struggle against. And so uh -huh. too did I lose my interest. So I made a royal decree to arrest everyone. If you're oh. ever interested in ending the game, just click prosecute on your main population. Guards start arresting citizens, then they arrest other guards before being arrested themselves. Prison uh -huh. wardens get jailed and break out of their own prisons. Chaos and pandemonium rule the day as everyone turns on each other and eventually they turn on me. In summary, Songs of Six has a very expansive, detailed, and enjoyable tutorial. Yeah. At 160 hours of playtime, I can't wait to play the actual game. This may not yeah. take the spot for game of the year, as we all know that's reserved for churn vector but it's a very close second the graphics the <laughs> as we all <laughs> what, what does that even mean what, what does that even mean what? <laughs> no that's reserved for churn vector but it's a very close second the graphics the changing of seasons the music the scale of a simulation considering this is written in java I have no words. There's no other game where the line between city builder and sociopathy is so blurred. To demonstrate this, for my second playthrough as the Garfimi, I proposed a novel form of meat production. It's less of a ranch or a pasture, and more of a tilapi nursery. For reference, at a consumption rate of half an apple a day, a fully grown tilapi child costs us 32 apples, but gives us twice that amount in meat and lever. Nice. And once they're adults, we arrest, execute, and butcher them. <laughs> the tilapi child to tilapi soup pipeline <laughs> is highly effective. And while my humans don't agree with cannibalism because they're bigoted chuds that can't grasp the richness of Garfimi culture, their stomachs can't complain. <laughs> so what have we learned today? What? One, prisoners are the ultimate cash crop. Labor is a resource and so are they. Two, yeah. look past people and their differences and see them instead as a source of protein. <laughs> Three, much like real life, retirement is economically unfeasible and exists only as a carrot and stick to motivate the working class. I Dear give this God. game my highest recommendation. I give it no days of food out of we're about to starve. <laughs> and because it's mainly one guy and not a corporate entity, I can just ask for a sale. If you're interested, it's 20% off on GOG and Steam for the rest of April. The first hundred to use the link win a free chemical castration or prefrontal lobotomy. Terms and conditions may apply. As nice. always, more content to come, so stay tuned. A warm Good thanks God. to the many members of the Merchants Guild, generously funding and bankrolling these videos. You're all truly wonderful. Have a good one. What was that? That was amazing. Oh, I love that. There, there's more, right? There has to be. There's still more video. What's happening? Or this must be all the Patreons then. Good God. Don't want to miss something though. That's the problem. <laughs> like, whoa, dude. That's, that's next level. That is, uh, that was a video. That, that was a video with a commentary. That was like a three course meal of like comedy parody and commentary like bro <laughs> dude <laughs> this man this man goes hard he goes way too hard oh god i loved it i loved it so much i had to really stop and find things to talk about because it was just so good it was just so enlightening <laughs> like what <laughs> It's too good, dude. It's so good. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> <clears throat>
God. That's so good. I love that. That's perfect. I, I can't. I can't. It, it, I actually have no words. Like, this video actually just went that hard. Oh my God, dude. It's so good. <laughs> to see that verse just like scree or whatever his name is, it's all that. <laughs> Bro, Cezine Touch is. I love him. I love his content. YouTube, from what I hear, does not like his content. I hear they demonetize the hell out of it, which is rather unfortunate because he's such a talented like person. He's such a talented creator. Like to weave this many things into the script, like, and he he, he explained it very well going into explaining the race, explaining the gameplay, and then what he did, right? Like, he explained it very well. It was a very good script. I love it. Like, <laughs> advertisers get a little nitpicky with stuff like this, though. <laughs> but, man, it was it was perfect. I, I can't recommend watching him enough. Like, dude's got... Dude's got some dark comedy, and I love it. It's so good. It just punches you in the face. It's so good. Like, oh man, I need more of this. I need more of this at some point, man. That was great. Down in the description down below, you will see uh, Sessine Touch channel as well as this original video. Definitely go check them out because God, this this was next level. And let me know what you thought. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>